All right, this is uh, the last presentation of uh, the day, and I'm going to be talking about. Uh, I'm Trevor Crow, by the way, uh, son of Lloyd Crow, who couldn't be here today. Uh, he's partner with Reynolds Farms with Larry. Um, both of them couldn't be here today. My dad's in Cuba, of all places. Don't ask me why. The uh, he said it was so cheap he couldn't pass it up, and it was so cheap he couldn't he uh, could afford to send his whole family. So I'm still here. So that I don't think he meant that literally. So, um, but uh, I've been helping our farm with the uh, precision agriculture side of things uh, about a year now, and it's been a bit of a learning experience for me. I own and operate Crow Productions, video production company, full time. So it's just been a uh, a side thing, you know, one or two hours a week, it, and it's been quite a learning experience. So a year ago, like I had mentioned, we went to a precision agriculture conference, and at that time, my hope was that there would be some sort of handbook of like, here's how to get your farm set up with precision agriculture. You know, just do this, 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 and you're off to the races. But uh, I quickly found out through the presentations and the different companies offering different products that uh, there is no rule book. So um, it's kind of going on your own and figuring out what works for you and, and your farm. So that's one thing I've been figuring out with Reynolds Farms, obviously a larger farming operation, what actually works, what doesn't, where we're going to spend our time uh, getting set up and where we're not. So the problem, the problem with, with one of the reasons why we wanted to implement precision agriculture was number one, we've, we've got all these great new equipment uh, with GPS uh, monitors that records all of this information, but nobody's using it. The, the memory card and the monitor is always left out. Um, the, it's not calibrated, so the yield data is not right. And, it becomes pretty standard with all the equipment, but either you, we don't know how to use it or we just don't have the time to implement it. Um, another thing is that precision farming can't get in the way of the day-to-day -day operations. You know, when it's planting time, you gotta go. And you can't be, you know, sitting around calibrating or fiddling with a little monitor to get it working. So it has to be user-friendly. It has to be something that you can implement that the operator doesn't have to figure out or change farms and fields all the time every time he enters a new field. So um, that's, that's another problem. The other thing is that at the beginning of the year, there's always good intentions to do plots or trials or to find out you know, what variety did better than another variety. But at the end of the day, when it comes harvest time, how many people here actually either A, remember what you planted in what field, or B, um, wrote it down somewhere? And oftentimes it's like, oh, I wrote it down, but it's in my truck, or it's in a folder, or I lost the piece of paper I wrote it down on. Or worse, it's a rock on a uh, seed bag in the middle of a field somewhere. So there's got to be a better way to keep track of all this information. So. The other thing is change is sometimes hard. Uh, implementing these newer technologies can be a bit daunting. Uh, myself, I'm a bit of a techie, obviously running my own video production company. Um, for us and our company, software makes us money. We rely on it every day and it's a money maker. For farming and software and farming is like water and oil. It just doesn't go together. And the, the software that I decided, and it's actually what uh, Lucas at the County Farm Center uses, is Ag Leaders SMS. Um, the basic software is uh, $800, and it actually took quite a lot of convincing to get Reynolds to actually spend $800 on something he can't see. So uh, this right here is just a screen grab. Um, we have all of our farms on the left-hand side. I've got them all organized, all of them mapped with all the boundaries. This right here is uh, Claire Parasol Farm just down the road here. This is Tubbs Road. And this, this data right here, you can see the, the is actually planter data where the, it shows uh, what Shane planted uh, earlier this spring. So that actually, I have the, uh, the, the little memory card here. 
just to show you. Got my phone. And so part of the, the things that we did this spring was get all the monitors on the planters set up with all the farms and fields and all of the data being recorded onto these USB sticks on the monitor. So this USB stick uh, goes into the computer and it's uh, the data from that season or that plant is imported into this software. And it'll automatically sort all the fields and farms and everything just by the GPS. It knows where, where, where you were. So um, just showing an example of that. So what worked for our farm? One of the first things we did was do field maps. And you can see up those steps, if you're interested, we have our boardroom. And on the wall, we have all of our maps of our farms and fields. So acres, great for insurance companies. They love it. They know exactly what your acreages are. Um, but on top of that, we have varieties. So we've tracked all the varieties that we planted on every farm. And on top of that, this one here has uh, acapella fungicide on one side and vitazine on the other side. And that's, obviously you can't see it uh, right now, but come harvest time, uh, if there's any difference in the yield, we will see that. This is just a sample yield map that some of the other presentations you've seen, but the goal with this is that obviously green being a higher yield, uh, the combine's recording the yield and correlating it with the GPS, and again, that little card will, will generate a yield map. Um, it'll also show weak, weak areas in the field, but you can see here, left-hand side, something was different. So what was different? We don't know, but this is just a sample. So my goal with that is at the end of the year, we'll be able to take all this yield data and correlate it with what we did in the spring or the summer. This uh, is actually the field just down here on the right-hand side. You see the signs along the road. Um, there's a 10-foot gap down the middle of the field, and that was, that was intentional, don't worry. Um, the right-hand side is um, non-genetically modified, non modified um, IP beans, and this is uh, GMO uh, uh, beans. Um, the diagonal right down here, we did a turbo till, so about a 100-foot swath diagonally right down the field. And if that does make an, any difference in the yield, it'll show up as a diagonal line uh, on, the, on the yield map. So down in the front here, we did turbo till. Uh, sorry, turbo till here, and then this was ripped because uh, there was a lot of soil compaction at the front. So again, if that made any difference, we'll see it on the yield map. Some other tests that we did uh, was we put hoses on the sprayer and did just uh, liquid nitrogen drops between the rows. Um, this was about knee high, but in other areas we were right up to the right up past the wheels, uh, almost near tassel time. Um, so we did. We didn't do all of our fields. We just did some strips in certain areas. Prior to doing the nitrogen t uh, application, we worked with Doug West at the County Farm Center and did some nitrate tests um, in certain areas. And we found that uh, with the amount of rain that we got this spring, and especially in some sandier areas like out at West Lake, all the nitrogen that we put on up front was basically gone. <laughs> um, and I know nitrate tests aren't accurate, uh, but if it's not reading anything, um, it's probably a warning sign. So, <laughs> um, so this is Thompson Farm. We did, uh, you can see the dark green are some strips uh, where we did the, just a couple passes, enough that uh, come, tar come harvest time that we'll see uh, a, a strip or a difference. And again, we did soil tests at the top high elevation and we did soil tests near the back where it was lower and both came back back low and I actually talked with Greg Stewart uh, as well uh, and he said you know if it's under I think 30 parts per million you probably would benefit from a second application so this type of data we're going to be using for next year and um, splitting nitrogen is something that I think we're going to eventually have to start doing, even though it's a lot of work. Um, I think we are going to see quite a difference in the yield in those areas. Again, this is uh, out in West Lake. Two different, uh, sand, really sandy up front, clay at the back. Uh, this, the, we did the soil tests here, and we did some split nitrogen tests. Two different varieties of, of corn seed as well. 
This is Roger Redner's farm, and this is actually where we did the soil and crop uh, dry broadcast with the, the vector unit. The middle yellow line right here is an 80-foot pass with the, with the vector. Uh, we we uh, only did uh, 30, uh, 30 gallons uh, at the spring, in spring. This uh, is another 10 right beside it of liquid, so we're going to be able to compare dry broadcast with uh, the liquid drops. Um, we have variable seed population, so we just I got my dad to do one pass uh, at minus 5,000 for seeding population and, and plus 5,000 for seeding population. And we'll see, um, I honestly think we did overpop, we did more than we needed to. Um, so that's another test. For next year, we can you know, drop it down 5,000 if there's really no difference in, in yield. So this here is our wheat harvest. So this is the very first time we've gotten uh, yield data. And this is just all locally from the different fields. And you can see quite easily uh, winter, winter burn uh, in the areas. Some, some fields did much worse than others. Um, the, the frustrating thing about this is we only had one combine with a GPS antenna. So out of the two combines, only half of the wheat harvest was recorded as yield data. So uh, Anderson's is actually coming next week to install the second GPS on our second combine. So we can actually, for soybeans and corn, we can get an exact full map of, of the yield data. So that was another $1,500 that I had to persuade the farm to get. So hopefully it pays off. <laughs> So at the end of the day, my dad and, and Larry, they want to see results. It has to affect the bottom line. It has to make money, right? Implementing this stuff, it has to, it has to pay for itself. So obviously, maybe you're getting it already that, yeah, some of these, this information, this data can really help in succeeding. So biggest thing, see what worked, see what didn't. Don't, don't take other people's word for it. Don't take Western Ontario's word for it. Don't take Maritimes or whatever. It's, it's what we have here is, is different uh, than, than any other places. We have quite a unique soil. Um, so you have to develop what works on your own farm and there's no better way to do it than, than with this. Obviously comparisons, you, uh, this year on our farm, we have probably a dozen different comparisons that we're doing, like I said, um, nitrogen, fungicide, fertilizers, seeding population, and varieties. Uh, all of those things are variables that can affect uh, next year's decision making. And we have the data to show what worked and what didn't. Addressing weak spots in fields, um, whether it's you know, drainage issues, uh, shallow soil, and you can really start to develop management zones. So management zones are just basically different areas of the field that you can say, okay, the back half of that field, you know, it's not as fertile as the front, so we're gonna change the variety or we're gonna change the seeding population or we're gonna change the nitrogen rate. It doesn't have to be complicated, it just, it's getting to know your fields is really, really what it's all about. Um, and then again, no more guesswork. For next year, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, at the end of the harvest, we can sit in the boardroom like adults and actually, uh, go through the data and say, okay, this is what we're doing for next year based off the data. Um, and to me, that's going to pay dividends on the yields, on our operating costs, even right down to rented land. You know, if we're spending too much on a farm and that isn't yielding, then, then get rid of it. Little, little things like that. So um, if you're interested in uh, seeing these results, I'm going to be posting it on Twitter, so I'm at the county farmer. My dad is uh, at Crow Lloyd. And just to get back at him, because he's not here and because he's in Cuba, I'm going to show you a picture he posted this summer on his Twitter. So you can see at the bottom, he, he says, oops, turned a little too short. So he uh, drove over a car with the sprayer this summer. <laughs> My response is, don't put that on Twitter. <laughs> he actually drove both tires right over the hood. He was coming off, this is Victoria Road, he was coming off Highway 62, and uh, 
you had enough momentum that both tires drove right over the, the hood. <laughs> Fortunately, the sprayer was okay. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, any questions? I do have our drone here on display, but I'm not going to get into that. So, yeah.